Hello YouTube! Welcome to Grass Redstone 201 Troubleshooting and Customizing. This class is for crafters who've already been bitten by the redstone bug and are building contraptions from others' tutorials. In this series, I'll be showing how I personally troubleshoot and customize redstone builds, and I invite you to download the test world, tinker with it, then show me how you've improved it. If you record on YouTube, send me a video. Uh, if you don't, no problem, just send me a few screenshots and we'll uh, go from there. Today's special guest is Kondrick, and Kondrick is a member of my uh, the Ward server, and he just finished building for us a very fancy charcoal farm. So, uh, Kondrick, if you don't mind, would you uh, give us the tour? Sure, absolutely. So, everybody knows the basic charcoal factory. Right. Separate chest for lumber, fuel and output. Right. Problem is, there are a few failure points for this design. One, you can clog the input chest if you put something in that doesn't smelt. Mm -hmm. uh, two, you can clog the fuel input by putting something in that doesn't burn as a fuel. Right. And it needs to be manually refueled. Right. A lot of people have moved on to this second design, which takes the output from the furnace and using an item elevator to put it back into the same chest that works as the fuel input. So I'm going to show the viewers what goes in here, filters down into the furnace, it's the same thing. This is also the charcoal and it comes into the side, but the charcoal gets pulled out into an item elevator and put into here. So it's automatically depositing charcoal into here and, and keeping the furnace supplied. And exactly. this redstone here is just a clock to get that item elevator going so it automatically refuels from the output chest right which is great except you can still clog the input with something that won't smelt and you can still clog the fuel line with something that doesn't work as a fuel right so, so what do we do to fix it my next step was to add a sorting cell to the input which filters it so that the only input that will go into the furnace is oak logs. Uh, this unfortunately introduces a backlog issue where if there's too much few uh, if there's too much going into the input of the furnace, you can break Breakers. the sorting cell. Right. But that gets solved a couple steps later. And the only change back here is just neatening this up so you've got room for your cell, so nothing else has changed. Exactly, because because of the sorting cell, the item elevator had to get taller to make room for everything. Right, okay, so now what? Uh, this next stage, as we can see on the signs, it solves the fuel line clog as well, because if we look back here, you know, sorting cell sorts the input and makes sure oak logs only go in. And then instead of going and pulling the fuel out of the output chest, it bypasses the output chest and go, takes priority down versus sideways for hoppers down takes priority. And it drops the charcoal into the furnace before it goes into the output chest. So there will okay. always be fuel so in the furnace. we've got wood dropping down here and only oak wood's going to come through this way and it'll go down, it's going to smelt, and when it's done it'll be charcoal coming through here up into the item elevator and because hopper priority goes down first, it's going to come down through this chain and back into here to provide the uh, charcoal. But once this gets filled up, it's going to clog and um, then this hopper can deposit into this chest. Exactly. Um, it, unfortunately, this also added another backlog issue of the item elevator possibly getting clogged if somehow the output chest overflows. And but stuff gets into this hopper and then this item elevator, you know, just exactly gives up the ghost. So exactly okay, so let's see the final result this crazy contraption back here <laughs> this crazy thing okay so, there are three triggers on this thing um the most important one is the brown trigger which is the lumber overflow trigger and that's this comparator here attached to the hopper directly above the furnace mm -hmm. and when there's there's a reason for these 
this line being as far out as it is, and that is because that length of redstone, which will be separated shortly, uh, that length of redstone allows about two stacks to go into the hopper that's into in, that's going into the furnace mm -hmm. before it extends a long enough signal to trigger this repeater that locks the input hopper. Okay, so it's not going to take any more wood if there's a backup here. If the, exactly, so it prevents the sorting cell from getting clogged. Okay. Uh, this black wool line right here says that if the output chest b is filled and this hopper going into the output chest starts to clog, then it will send a trigger down here and also lock the input. Okay. So not only can you not clog the sorting cell, if the lumber backs up, you also can't clog the item elevator because it won't let it make more charcoal than it can hold. Right. And I think that trigger is at about one stack in that hopper. Good. Uh, now the bonus, slightly unnecessary, but I, I added it because I could, um, is a locking piston to prevent people from taking out of the output chest. So can't even open this chest. Yep, can't open can't the chest if the piston is extended. And the trigger for the piston extent, um, to prevent the piston from extending or to retract the piston is this third comparator here on the cyan wall, which checks the fuel line going into the furnace and says if that's full, it sends this redstone signal all the way around and into that block under the torch, which retracts the piston. Uh, it also can be triggered if there's a backlog of fuel or, or of, of output or lumber. Right. So either way, if there's a backlog anywhere. Nobody's getting into that chest. No, if there's a backlog anywhere, it unlocks the chest so that people are free to pull out because it means that there's either lumber. Oh, because it's too full, up. so please exactly. you know, release the... Got it. Okay. It either says it's too full or it says somebody just dumped lumber in and I'm <laughs> smelting new charcoal, so I'll let them take some out. Okay. And this gray spot is an added bonus that is completely unnecessary. All it does is... Oops. Wrong spot. All it does is turn off a redstone lamp if the piston is extended. And if the piston is not extended say you can actually access the charcoal, then the lamp turns on. So people know if there's enough in the system to allow them to pull charcoal out. Yeah, I love indicator lights. Absolutely love indicator lights. It's okay. completely unnecessary, but... <laughs> oh, no, I think it's totally necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to walk all the way over here to check something. I want to see the light. <laughs> It's a good indicator of whether people need to go down to the tree farm and chop some logs before they try to take charcoal. Right. Okay, so I'm guessing that our challenge for the community is to see if we can compress this any. And the answer is almost, almost, almost always yes. Um, and... In this case, though, that may be difficult because the length of the signal off of each of these comparators is important to making sure right. it locks correctly. I've been looking at this and I've been thinking about it for a while and to be quite honest, I'm I'm rather stymied. So it it may take some fiddling or just someone to come at this from a completely different angle. Um because as I see it, this this is as neat as I could ever get it. I I've looked and I just I understand what's going on here and I don't see terribly much room for improvement. I'm not really sure what I would do to change it, to be honest. So, good work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I spent probably a full day, possibly more, I don't remember exactly, coming up with this concept. And every time I looked at it, I found another failure point that I had to fix. Right. Well, and that's always the way, I've, isn't it? I can't find any more failure points. So, uh -huh. hopefully, I've solved it. My, actually, my question for the community is, are there any more failure points and how do we solve them right. without complicating the get redstone more, too much more? Get some more peer testing in. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good, um, that's a good Now, one. the 
as I said, the yellow line and the gray line are completely preference only. They're not absolutely necessary, but they do add that little bit of community friendliness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you very much, Kondrick. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And Where'd we will have this download for you in the description. Please do download, take a look around and uh, see what you can do with this. And um, I look forward to seeing everybody's submissions. Absolutely. I can't wait to hear what people have to say. Awesome. Okay, well, I will see you around, Kondrick. Yep, see you later. <laughs>